Welcome to this night of all nights, the night when we celebrate the coming of Jesus into the world. Jesus, who shines light in the dark places of our lives. <clears throat> Jesus, who came for the salvation of all people. Tonight, as we worship together, we will celebrate communion. So you might want to get your bread and your wine ready. At the end of the service, we will share the light. Get a candle for each person worshiping with you. Emmanuel, the Lord is near us. Lift up your hearts as we worship together. Our call to worship. On this holiest of nights, we come, joining the shepherds who are stunned by wonder. On this most silent night, we come, our hopes and dreams joining those of Mary and Joseph. On this night of carols and candlelight, we come, our glad songs joining with the choirs of angels over us. of the world night the light of the world has come Christ our Lord is born the light of the candle burns before us the light of his love burns within us Christ our Lord is born O come O come Emmanuel when you come bring hope peace joy and love Let us pray. O wondrous God of stars, we come to tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. We hear the names, wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, and we are in awe. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Touch us, touch our hearts and our minds and souls Speak to us now that we may hear the good news. Bring us into the wonder of your holy presence. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy of the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, 
the bar across their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood, shall be burnt as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son has been given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace on the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace 
among those whom he favors. My brothers and sisters, this is the good news, the gospel of grace. just March 15th. Tonight's Christmas Eve service feels strange. We should be in the sanctuary giving and receiving hugs, meeting friends and family who are visiting from out of town. We should be worshiping at celebration with our hearts soaring as we listen to the music. 
Instead, we are worshiping virtually. But in spite of these things, there is something that draws us together. No matter what has happened in our world in the last 10 months, it's still Christmas Eve. And we come to celebrate God's love, which is faithful and true. There's a story told about the children in a small Sunday school who were putting on the annual Christmas pageant. Because the Sunday school was so small, a single girl was chosen to be all of the Magi. They practiced and they practiced until everyone had the story ready to perform for the whole congregation. So when it came time for the Magi's entrance, she majestically swept up the aisle, draped in a flowing robe, wearing all the costume jewelry accumulated over the years by the Christian education director. Pausing and bowing before the infant's crib, she announced, Greetings, baby. I bring you gifts, gold, circumstance, and mud. Now, this story is meant to be funny, and it is, almost, but it is all so painfully true for us this Christmas. In 2020, life has brought us a bit of gold, not money, but delightful and meaningful moments. We have also been overwhelmed by the circumstances that have come to us, unpredictable and fearful at times. And then there is indeed the mud, difficult moments, <clears throat> overwhelming moments when we have been stuck in the mud. <clears throat> William Willimon writes, it takes a certain amount of courage and conviction to admit to yearning for Christmas. In order to see the fragile light of Christmas, one has first got to become accustomed to the dark. In order to see the highest, the stars in the highest heavens, one must sit for a while in the darkness here on earth. And now <clears throat> we know in a new and different way what it is to sit for a while in the darkness. We know the reality of the mud and circumstance. <clears throat> that may be why the birth of a baby in Bethlehem did not fit any messianic expectations. This birth in a barn doesn't seem too mighty and holy. God made a decision to come to us in the most humble and vulnerable way possible. God came in the muck and the mud of life. Now we want to make Christmas more befitting for God and so we try to inject a bit of glory and power that we associate with God. But of course we also want everything to be happy and joyful. <clears throat> we want to feel and celebrate the Christmas spirit. But this year we realize that Christmas is mixed with wonder and amazement and generous amounts of mud. This year we realize that in the midst of it all are tears and pain. We can't sanitize it by taking what has happened this year out of the picture. We must sit with it and know that even in this year, Jesus still comes this night. That night in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth. It was both painful and joyful. It was amazing and it all happened in the mud and the dirt of a barn. We too find this night joyful and painful. We look around and we remember that even in the joy of our celebration, there are many who are missing, those family and friends who cannot be here. The memories flood our hearts and minds and keep us from forgetting. This is the true wonder and glory of Christmas. It is the good news that in the ordinary birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, we still meet God. It is through God's loving and merciful holiness that God comes to meet us tonight. It reminds us that there is nothing too muddy to separate us from the love of God, Emmanuel, God with us. Tonight, we can be honest with each other and with God about what we have felt and experienced this year. <clears throat> Life that is muddy and messy, 
But when we look back on that first Christmas, we realize that is not all. There is still much to celebrate. Bishop Michael Curry writes that while this is a strange year, the ministry God gives us remains the same. We will prepare him room in our hearts by taking on the ministry Jesus demands of us. Feed those who are hungry. Welcome the stranger. Clothe those who are naked. Heal those who are sick. Visit the prisoner. Love God. Love your neighbor. Now our Advent theme was chosen on purpose for this year. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. We gather this night bringing our fears, the fears we cannot deny, but all is not lost for tonight on this night of all nights, God meets us here to restore our hope through the birth of a baby. Barbara Brown Taylor writes that Christmas Eve is the time when the membrane between heaven and earth is so thin that you can almost see through it. Tonight is the night we measure all time against. And she is right. Tonight we come close to that special portal that connects us with heaven, with that other world and with those who once were with us but have passed to the other side. Last night, we went outside with our grandchildren to look up into the night sky and to see the star shining in the night. It was Jupiter and Saturn shining brightly. It made me think of that night so long ago when the shepherds looked into the night sky and saw a star that led them to Jesus. This particular sight that we saw last night was last seen in the 1600s we are reminded that the star still shines, even when we cannot see it. God's love still surrounds us, even in this year of a little gold and a lot of circumstance and mud. The light shines and our hope is reborn within us. We are not overcome by the darkness. Maya Angelou in her Christmas poem, Amazing Peace, writes this, <clears throat> Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunset. Hope spreads around the earth. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. The pastor of a Presbyterian church in Pennsylvania decided to introduce the Mexican tradition of La Posadas. Now, La, La Posadas means the shelter. And this tradition reenacts the journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem as they sought a place to rest so that Mary's baby could be born. The pastor decided to help the congregation understand La Posadas by taking the porcelain baby Jesus that always rests in the church creche and placing it in a box with prayers and Advent readings. The prayers, the readings, and the baby Jesus were then sent on their way from here to there, so that by the time of the Christmas Eve service, baby Jesus will have been in every single home in the congregation. What a wonderful idea this is, because this year we need to have the thrill of hope that comes when the baby Jesus arrives anew to our home and our hearts this night. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us. Our Lord, Emmanuel. Amen. And now our litany on communion. Almighty God and creator of light, a child is born for us and a son is given to us. 
your eternal word leap down from heaven in the silent watches of the night in the little town of Bethlehem. Now our church is filled with wonder at the nearness of God. Open our hearts to receive Christ's light. Increase our vision with the rising of the dawn that our lives may be filled with Christ's glory and peace. And now we gather at God's table to break the bread and share the cup. We remember that on that night, Jesus, who had grown to be a man, sat with his friends, the disciples. And on that night, he took the bread, <clears throat> he blessed it, and then he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. When you eat it, remember, it is the bread of life, the body of Christ. We eat together. And then Jesus took the cup and blessed it. And he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. When you eat this bread, and drink this cup. Remember me and remember my love, which came to you so long ago in Bethlehem. It is the cup of grace, the blood of Christ. We drink together. Please pray with me. God, we thank you that in this year when so much seems different and unusual and unpredictable that we can count on meeting you at this table Sunday after Sunday after Sunday you have promised to be here and so we give you thanks oh God for this meal that nourishes our body to be your light in the darkness amen before there was a bright star shining over the baby's manger before the Wise men came to see the Christ child. There was a scared girl, maybe 12 or 13, riding on a donkey in the cold, dark night, going somewhere she had never been before, wondering how had she been chosen to carry the Christ child. <laughs>
Litany of Christmas. God of unimaginable love, on the first Christmas, you became one of us. We celebrate your love for every person in every place and time. God of all humanity, you offered your peace to everyone. We celebrate your peace in your church and accept your commission to share it in all the world. God of shepherds, you announced your arrival to the poorest, the most humble. We celebrate your good news to each of us and to everyone. God of the manger, you came to us through your son in a small and simple place. We celebrate your presence with us this day. God of deliverance, we celebrate your protection and mercy toward all who are sick or in trouble. God of birth, you opened yourself to each of us, no matter who we are. We celebrate this day your love and peace. Come in the midst of our hopes and fears. God of Christmas, bless us as we once again celebrate your coming into this, your world. Amen. Amen. For over a hundred years, there has been a church meeting where celebration now worships. The first congregants that worshiped here spoke German and they worshiped using German up until World War II. So every year at our Christmas Eve service, we hear Silent Night sung in German to honor this congregation who worshiped here for so many years. Tünte 
Usually when you walk into the sanctuary on Christmas Eve, you are given a candle. And at this moment, then we would walk down the aisle and begin lighting the candles. You would then turn to the person next to you and light their candle until all of the candles in the sanctuary are lit. Light your candles at home and share with the friends who are with you. Joseph, the joy of the angels, and the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.